power and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and payload until Falcon 9 goes on internal power and clears the pad. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both the first stage and second stage should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each other, with the first stage finishing up at the T-minus 3 minute mark and the second stage at around the T-minus 2 minute mark. You may have also noticed those white clouds around the rocket. They are part of the chilled gas above the LOX tank liquid surface that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when that gas comes out into the Florida air, the humid moist air condenses into clouds and water. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. And stage one LOX load is complete. And there you heard that call out that stage one LOX loading is complete on the vehicle. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And then just inside of T minus two seconds, we'll light the Merlin 1D engines for liftoff. The Ovson 3 payload continues to be healthy and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Now it's worth noting, at the request of our customer, we will not be sharing any views of the payload today and we'll be ending the webcast with the stage one landing. Weather is still looking green and the range is ready to support our T0 of 6.04 p.m. Eastern Time. And with that, we're proceeding into the last few minutes of terminal count. Coming up in just a few moments. Stage two lock load is complete. And there's that call out that stage two locks loading is complete on the vehicle. Falcon 9 is now fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. At the T minus one minute mark, Falcon Castle, 9. Falcon 9 will be in startup, and this is when the rocket's flight computer will take over the launch count. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there you heard that call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. Next, we wait for the go for launch from the launch director. LD, go for launch. And there you heard that the LD is go for launch. So at T minus 38 seconds, all systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 with the Ovson 3 payload. seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station carrying the Ovzon 3 payload. Now during the rocket's ascent, we'll tilt the engines, the technical term for that being gimbling, and that's when we turn the rocket horizontally in what Power we call and telemetry is nominal. in what we call a gravity turn. The rocket will still be going up, but will now also be headed horizontally away from the launch pad. Moments ago, we also throttled the engines down in preparation, supersonic. in preparation for max Q or maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max 
Max-Q. And there's that call out for Max-Q, and this is when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic stress as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. The rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontal, horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. As the vehicle continues to ascend, make sure to watch that telemetry at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Coming up shortly, we're going to have five events in rapid succession, starting with MECO, or main engine cutoff. This will be followed by stage separation. Then we'll have the stage one flip. This will be followed by the second engine start one. And then lastly, we'll have the boost back burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage. And the sequence of events should start in about 10 seconds from now. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. Stage one boost back startup. And there you heard and saw those events happening back to back with Miko, followed by stage separation, stage one flip, followed by the second engine start one, and then the stage one boost back startup. Coming up shortly will be fairing separation. This is when we jettison the fairing halves away from the second stage. And as I mentioned earlier, both fairings are already flight proven and we'll be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again once they fall back to Earth. Fairing separation confirmed. And there's that call out for fairing separation. In just a few moments, we should see the boost back burn end on the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one boost back shutdown. And there's a confirmation of boost back shutdown on the Falcon 9 first stage. It's T plus three minutes and 40 seconds into tonight's mission. Now, just past the T plus six minute mark, you should see on your screen the Falcon 9 first stage's entry burn. To start the entry burn, we'll relight three of the Merlin 1D engines, starting with the center engine known as E9, and this will be followed shortly after by the E1 and E5 engines, which slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which then helps us recover and reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving incredibly fast, and this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, and this deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. Now, given that tonight's mission is this booster's 10th overall, that soot layer is noticeably visible on the skin of the booster. On the left-hand side of your screen, we've got live views from our, Falcon 9, from our Falcon 9 first stage, and on the right side is a ground tracking shot of that booster as it descends back to Earth. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see the speed of that rocket with the telemetry shown at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. As I discussed earlier, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting tonight's mission will perform this entry burn for the 10th time. And that entry burn should start in about 25 seconds from now.
Stage one entry burn to startup. And there's that confirmation of startup of the entry burn on our Falcon 9 first stage. As a reminder, on the left-hand side of your screen is a view from the booster live, and the right side shows a ground tracking shot of the booster. Stage one, entry burn shutdown. Stage one, FTS is saved. And there's confirmation of entry burn shutdown on the first stage. Now the Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Nominal trajectory. And is consuming approximately 700 gallons of fuel per second. We also just heard that call out of nominal trajectory. Coming up in just about 10 seconds, we should see the landing burn start on our Falcon 9 first stage. Stage one is transonic. Second stage in terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. And there's confirmation of the stage one landing burn. Stage two FTS is saved. Impact shut down. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it. This landing marks SpaceX's 261st recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. And as a reminder, we'll be ending the webcast here at the, request, orbit. at the request of our customer. We also just heard a confirmation of nominal parking orbit. All of us here at SpaceX want to thank our customer, Avzon3, for entrusting us with tonight's mission. We also want to give a shout out to the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting tonight's efforts. That'll conclude our webcast coverage of SpaceX's second launch of 2024 and 297th overall mission to date. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again very soon.